Hello everyone, welcome to the chapter 2 of strategic management. We're going to talk about the analyzing the external environment of the field and how we could create a competitive advantages. The purpose of this chapter is for you to familiarize with techniques for evaluating a firm's external environment and we will focus on the value uh, that the manager should add when they sense an event outside the company. So we are, we're going to emphasize that external environment, these are the resources or these are the factors outside the company wherein the organization has no control. We call it also external forces. We are going to identify the different factors that affect directly to the decision makings of the organization. We'll try to focus also on how managers they could be able to step ahead of competitions by accurately anticipating and promptly responding to actions that can impact the organization. We will talk about the environmentally aware organizations and we're going to give emphasis that monitors using scanning, monitoring, and competitive intelligence to develop forecasts. Another thing is uh, we're going to discuss the influence of the six broad segments, demographic, social, cultural, political, or legal, technological, economical, and global of the general environment of the field. And finally, let's talk about the role of the competitive environment, also we call it as test or industry, and its analysis through the application of Porter's five forces model. We are going to address how industry and competitive practices are being affected by the internet and digital technologies. For this chapter, we are going to address the three important processes, scanning, monitoring, and gathering competitive intelligence which monitors use to develop environmental forecasts. If you have your book, you can see in Exhibit 2.1, it depicts relationship among these activities. And it's try to address scenario analysis and its role in anticipating future major changes in the external environment as well as the role of SWOT analysis. According to Ram Chara, CEO must have the ability to sense what is coming before fog clear. The skill is known to be perceptual ability. Uh, it allows the CEO to know early warning signals and updated of what's happening outside the organization so that they could position courses of action to sustain competitive advantage. Competitive advantage is the condition the company is in a favorable business position. What are the example of competitive advantage? A company has a competitive advantage if they have a direct access to natural resources, they have a highly skilled labor, they have a unique geographic location accessible to the resources as well, then they have an access to the new technology and low operational cost. How to improve CEO perceptual equity? These are the three examples wherein the CEO had been doing in several industry. Number one, they met with key managers periodically to discuss what is going on. So these are specific examples of the strategies. Secondly, um, they met CEOs of other organizations for science year, that's why in the industry you could see 
a group of CEOs or there are a lot of associations who have uh, attending who are attending uh, conferences seminars to improve knowledge and skills and to be updated of what's happening in the industry and lastly um, they ask outsiders to criticize their firm's strategy so they allow other CEO to give comments and a sort of consultation on how uh, they could improve the organization's operations. We understand that manager has an important role in directing organizations towards success. And it is important that managers should know how to become environmentally aware. 1.2.7 shows how managers enhance awareness of the external environment. We will address the three important processes, scanning, monitoring, and gathering competitive intelligence. So these processes are being used to develop for fast. The figure shows the relationship of these three important activities. Environmental screening involves surveillance of the firm's external environment to predict environmental changes to come and detect changes that are already underway. For example, how fracture and gumbo, which is wide of household products, can be a good barometer of household spending. Uh, environmental scanning can also involve obtaining information from your customer base. So they add some feedback, comments, so that they will be able to decide of, of what product to paste out or what products to develop. Specifically, they call their customers each week to see whether they had any ideas and surprisingly customers like it and they're happy about it. and it increased uh, from their sales up for about $15 million. It is a 41% share increase in the market. Environmental monitoring tracks the evolutions of trends, events, or the stream of activities in the external environment. They monitor the consumer's behavior, the economic activities. They monitor the consumer's uh, expenditure. For example, uh, in, in a hotel industry, okay, they monitor the bedroom occupancy rate, the revenue per available room. And for imports executive, okay, PR1, okay, they monitor the net income, okay, the disposable income, and consumer confidence index. The third one, they monitor also in Johnson & Johnson the percentage of gross domestic product spent on healthcare and number of active hospital beds so that they could make a decision on how many products they are going to produce, what kinds of products is needed in the market. Competitive intelligence helps uh, firms define and understand the industry and identify rivals, strengths, and weaknesses. If it is being done properly, competitive intelligence helps a company to avoid surprises by effectively anticipating and responding to competitors' moves. This activity uses information to track competition flow and trends. For example, banks continually track home loans, auto loans, and certificate of deposits. Another one is airlines. Okay? They monitor, okay? changes on airfare daily in response to competition so that they could make a, a decision if they're going to drop the price or increase the price. Monitoring activities okay, has become easily 
to trap nowadays because of the available uh, software and available information in the internet. Specifically, um, if you are aware with that slide share, okay, you could see publicly sharing PowerPoint from different organizations. Cora, it is a website wherein uh, contains a question and answer relevant to the business industry and other field of study. The third one, we have the spionage. Spionage, it reveals advertising campaigns of companies, the best taglines, the words that are being used in advertising. And the common one, YouTube, a great for finding interviews for executives. Environmental scanning, monitoring, and competitive intelligence are important inputs for analyzing the external environment. However, they are all of little use unless they provide raw material that is accurate enough to help managers make accurate forecasts. Forecasting predicts directions like market shift, scope, will it include the entire economy, the politics, or particular industry, and speed and intensity like per average percent of increase or decrease. Example, in 1997, the former Microsoft CEO Nathan Dean Myro mentioned that Apple is already dead, but in 2020, Apple ranked number three as the most valuable brand in the world by Visual Capitalist, and Microsoft is in number four. How about scenario analysis? So scenario analysis provides a set of tools that enable managers to imagine trends and opportunities the future may bring. As a general rule, scenarios should be used by businesses whose external environments are prone to fundamental or sudden change and whose anticipation of such change is of vital strategic importance. It is important to note that scenario analysis draws on a wide range of discipline and interest among them, economics, psychology, sociology, and demographics. So they're going to use this kind of analysis to develop an alternative future decisions. The common and the basic technique for analyzing firm and industry condition is SWOT analysis. Okay? SWOT analysis identify the strengths, the weakness, the opportunities, and the threats of the company that may affect the decision making of the organization. Particularly, strengths and weakness analyze firm's internal conditions. Okay? So it analyzes which aspect of the operation that the firm excels or where it may be lacking or needs some improvement. For the opportunities and threats, we focus on the external environment. Okay? Uh, we assess the different in development that exists in the general environment and also the activities among firms' competition. We mentioned that manager can enhance awareness of the external environment by implementing scanning, monitoring, and gathering information through competitive intelligence. And particularly, what are we going to scan? What are we going to monitor? And which kind of competitive intelligence that we have to gather? For this part, we are going to talk about specifically the factors of the general environment. The general environment consists of factors that can have a dramatic effect on a firm's strategy. Typically, 
of fear has little ability to predict trends and events in the general environment. The fear has no control and they could not easily predict what is happening outside the company. That's why they are going to use a lot of instruments and tools on how they can measure the flow of competition and the events in the external environment. So we divide the general environment into six segments, demography, sociocultural, political or legal, technological, economic, and global. If you're going to check your book at the page 44, exhibit 2.2, it is specifically determined the general environment, key trends, and events. Demographics are the most easily understood and quantifiable elements of the general environment. Demographics includes elements such as aging population, rising or declining affluence, changes in ethnic composition, geographic distribution of the population, and income level disparities. Like, for example, in Italy, the factors that contribute to the rapid increase of NCOB casualty, I think around more than 1,800, is because of its aging population. Italy has the oldest population in Europe. That's why it's really uh, heavily affected. Social cultural segments or forces influence the values, beliefs, and lifestyle of a society. Example, include a higher percentage of women in the workforce. Dual income families increases the number of temporary workers, greater concern for healthy diets and physical fitness, greater interest in the environment, and families postponing having children so these are the aspects that may affect the consumer behavior the spending ability of the consumer in saudi arabia it was only in 1956 when they opened schools for women the first school was the dar al hanan the social norm in saudi arabia is segregation of women and decisions are responsibility of male Guardians. Also in the U.S., women now hold 51.6% of all managerial and professional jobs, but before, they do not include women in a workforce. So a new focus on soft skills like mentoring, inspiring, collaboration, and building relationships may benefit women. So if the nature of your business is about, um, like, counseling or your product pertains to uh, enhancement of personality, okay, you, you may consider um, hiring uh, a female employee. Like for example, in hospitality industry, why do you think there are a lot of female worker in the front test or front line? Because um, normally during in the early days, the businessmen or the traveler are commonly male. Okay, so to attract a lot of businessmen, they tend to hire um, female because of their pleasing personality and their passionate attitude in working, and which attracts a lot of male customer. And that's what we call the the, the soft skills also. And in the comprehensive study of more than 7,000 leaders, women rank higher than men in 12 out of 16 leadership attributes. Okay. So this is just only in a particular this study. In terms of political or legal segments, what are the external forces okay, that covers this uh, category. Political processes and legislation influence the regulations, so more on rules and regulations, with which industries must comply. 
Some important elements of the political or legal arena include tort reform, the Americans with Disabilities Act or the ADA, the repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act in 99, now banks may offer brokerage services, the regulation of utilities in other industries, and increases in the federally mandated minimum wage here in Korea. Okay, you are being known to frequently change your law to change your policy but of course you're doing that based on the current situation of your country another example is president donald trump um had implemented a policy closing the border to mexicans because he assumed that americans were losing job because of immigrants and some of them are undocumented and illegal. Here also in Korea, last time I had watched in, uh, in the television that there is a mass demonstration okay, calling against the foreign workers. Okay, they want foreign workers to be uh, hosted in Korea because uh, some Koreans are losing their jobs because foreigners are accepting compensation beyond or uh, uh, below a uh, minimum wage okay? if you are uh, an owner of uh, or of a company here in Korea of course you're trying to get some way on how you could minimize labor costs that's why they hire foreign workers okay? because they have to compensate them less than Koreans and they are even hiring undocumented foreigners okay, that will work for them. That's why nowadays Korea has a very strict policy. They implement a strict policy of uh, entertaining or accepting uh, tourists or foreigners from other countries. And another policy that they had just released is about uh what they what they call like they're giving uh a chance for the illegal foreigner the illegal workers here in korea okay to surrender is to surrender to to the immigration and they could still come back here and uh they're going to delete or they're going to erase the the record of being uh, overstay here in Korea and they call it amnesty amnesty due to the dramatic development in technology it leads to the new products and services which improve also the sanction the features and the delivery to the end user innovations really create entirely new industries and alter existing industries if you can see in your monitor, the, the particular examples like genetic engineering, uh, 3D printing, computer aided design, research in synthetic and synthetic materials, and etc. Recently, okay, due to research and development, they have invented what we call fisholytics, which link wearable computing device with data analysis. A particular example is Nike Plus, the shoes. Okay? It used by runners to track distance, speed, and other metrics. I think Apple Watch also have the same features. One of the most complex and compli complicated segments of general environment is economic segments. The economy has an impact on all industries from suppliers of raw materials to the manufacturers of finished goods and services, as well as all organizations in the service, both sale, retail, government, and nonprofit sectors of the economy. The key indicators include take note of this interest rates, unemployment rates, the consumer price index. The gross domestic product GDP and the net disposable income. The most watched economic index is BJIA or 
Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see there uh, the different flow of the industry, okay? which one is, uh, which has a, a significant impact okay? in terms of numbers. Okay? In Korea, okay, international trading or Korea's trading, they are very particular and following keenly the Korean economic index. Nowadays, a lot of countries are opening their doors towards globalization because it's able to found out that there's a huge opportunity to access in a larger potential markets and it could broaden the base of factor of production. Okay? They could find low labor costs in China, in Vietnam, in the Philippines, and available raw materials. They could outsource skilled managers and technical professionals. However, such endeavors carry many political and economic risks. More so, example of important elements in the global segments include currency, uh, increasing of global trade, economic emergence of India, China, admittance to the World Trade Organization, trade agreements, uh, regulations, and other trade blocks or trade barriers. So this would really affect the decision making of the organization. So they have to comply with the international rules and regulations, KPE, promulgated by ICC, International Chambers of Commerce, and some of the rules and regulations, okay, created by World Trade Organization. As a manager, okay, you have to consider the key factors in the global economy and that is the rising of the middle class in emerging countries and how it has led to increased employment in those countries by multinationals. If you're going to evaluate them, okay, you could find uh, some strategy on how you could position your products and services in global segments. So now, what are the relationship among these elements? What is the relationship of demographic to social, to economic, political, technological, and global segments? So let us try to understand the connection of these particular segments. As we take note in our discussion, corporations are increasingly collecting and analyzing data on their customers, including data on customers' characteristics, purchasing patterns, employee productivity, and physical asset utilization. Such efforts have the potential to help firms better customize their product and service offerings to customers as well as more efficiently use the resources of the company. Okay. So demographic trends have implications for economy. Then greater access to technology affects economic and global relationship. Politics, okay. it may vary from different country to another and particular industry, especially tariff okay. and uh, digital technology. It could alter the way business is conducted in nearly every business domain. For example, uh, Pepsi, they use data, okay, data analytics to develop an algorithm. Okay. Algorithm lowers the rate of inventory stockouts and they share it 
pay to the entire partners or to their uh, partner in the industry. Okay. It is not only the general environments must be given a lot of consideration. Okay. A manager should also focus on the competitive environment. Importantly, or we call it the industry environment. The manager should know how to monitor the nature of competition. Just like you should know the game. Okay? You should know how the player play. And you should know the profitability of a firm. Including also the customer, your buyer and the supplier. When you consider your suppliers, okay, we have to take note of the forward in situation. The forward in situation includes the control of direct distribution of its products, okay, where they sell their products. Okay. For example, farmer sells his craft to the market than supermarket. So if I'm going to look for a supply with a low cost, definitely I'm going to go directly to the supplier. Okay. I'm not going to buy some stuff in supermarket but of course if we're going to buy directly to the supplier you have to consider the volume size of your uh of your purchasing purchasing ability since we already understand that analyzing the external environment of the firm by scanning monitoring and gathering competitive intelligence would create a competitive advantage, particularly evaluating global and competitive environment. So let's try to take a look on Michael's Porter model. Okay, so this model, as being suggested, would draw competitive advantage. How this model provide favorable condition to guarantee company business success? This well-known analytical tool by Michael Porter's Five Forces Model of Industry okay, is being used to examine the industry-level competitive environment. So it means that it concentrates in the level of industry competition. It provides insight of dynamic and expected levels. And it also includes potential entrants, the bargaining power of buyer, and the bargaining power of suppliers, the threat of substitute for goods and services, and the intensified competition. So let us try to take a look on how this model could compensate, could complement the business profile. To guarantee the success of business operation, it is very important that we identify the different trends that would hinder and that would affect the decision making of the firms. First, let's discuss the threat of new entrants. So it means the entrants of new competitors. Of course, if it is a new competitors, they have new business ideas new product, new marketing strategy, they have the the most uh, relevant and uh, new technologies, okay? So the threats are like company who use low cost of raw materials, okay, that is economies of scale. They use a uh, strong brand loyalty for product differentiation and some of them, they enter in the market with a low investment but with a huge uh, scope of products, okay? And this could be affected by like government subsidy, okay? And another factor is that they have access to low materials, okay? New entrants have an innovative ways to enter industry by cleverly mixing and matching state-of-the-art technology so therefore as a manager we have to evaluate this aspect we have to be knowledgeable of the trends and 
changes in your environment. Okay? That's why if you're going to study the, the subject in every aspect of the course, the professor should give an insight of the new trends, issues, and challenges in the related industry. Not just the technology, but also with the political evolution, the consumer's behavior pattern, and you could find it in true different research uh, results. Okay, so let's move on to the, the next threat, the bargaining power of buyers. Okay, so let us differentiate first between buyer and consumer. Buyer or customer, they buy goods or services and resell it. Okay, or they use it for other purposes, okay, for manufacturing. But for consumer, okay, they are the one who consume the product. Okay, the, they are the end user of the product. Okay, so they do not resell it. Okay? That is the difference between consumer and the buyer. Okay? So the bargaining power of buyers pertains to the threat that buyers may force down prices and they could bargain for higher quality of goods and services. It could really affect the decision making because if you have a customer who wants to pay less but wants to get more, Okay, you have to strategize, you have to think about something on how you could persuade them to pay high so that they could get more. Okay, so the buyers groups are powerful. Okay, either they are a single buyer or volume buyer. Okay, and this buyer, okay, could give you a, a low profit and uh, could uh could, could switch call, uh cost okay so buyers who switch from one supplier to another would really affect your decision making okay? why um uh, this customer switch from one supplier to another so how are you go the challenge is how are you going to sustain them okay so there is a particular strategy like the backward integration that is being used by Amazon and Tesco. So they directly buy materials to supplier. So backward integration example, a baker uh, who bought wheat professor okay, or a flour professor, then they're going to buy their own flour or wheat in the market of course if you're going to buy the processor the processor it will be uh, it will be spending less the next threat that may influence the decision making of the care is the bargaining power of suppliers okay supplier can exert bargaining power by threatening to raise prices or reduce the quality of purchase because that's why sometimes you will hear in, in the news that there is not enough supply of egg, flour, rice, sugar because the supplier is doing some kind of hoarding. Hoarding meaning uh, they uh, hold, okay, they kept the, the supply so that if there will be no uh, enough suppliers stuck in the market there will be an increase of demand. So if there will be an increase of demand, the tendency is they have the opportunity to increase the price. The supplier, if the supplier groups are powerful, powerful especially if they are few, they can dominate the market. If there's no competition and suppliers sell to several industries, Okay. So the supplier is also powerful if the buyer quality is affected by industry product. So as if there's a differentiated product and there's a tendency of switching costs. Okay. So that's why one of the strategy they are using is what we call the forward integration. 
Okay, so when you say forward integration, is that the supplier merge, okay, with uh with other supplier or the or the organization, okay, merge or make some alliances to the manufacturer directly. For example, Disneyland. Okay, of course, even Disneyland is being a okay, the uh the, the Initially, the company has no capacity to hire a lot of people. That's why uh, they, there's a tendency that they partner with other agency, human resource management agency, who will take care of the recruitment of employees. Another example is that Disneyland purchased more than 300 retail stores okay, that sell merchandise based on Disney characters. So that's what we call alliances. So they give rights or they not just give rights but uh, initially also they partner okay, or sometimes they buy the company, the entire company okay, to, to lower down their their cost. So that could be one of the strategy. So as a manager, uh, you also have this kind of tendency as a strategy for you to be able to anticipate the action of supplier who tends to keep on squeezing the price against the, the firm. Okay, so they will become powerless if you're going to use forward integration, but of course, it should uh, be according to the capacity of the, the firm. Okay, the next thread is the thread of substitute products and services. So it is a thread of limiting the potential returns of an industry by placing a ceiling price. Okay? So example, airline industry, okay? the thread of uh, like a businessman who will no longer travel for meetings and conferences, but instead they will conduct teleconferencing like what we are doing, like Zoom that us. Okay, so that could be one of the trends. Okay, so if the discoveries of technologies, telecommunication is now really effectively affecting the industry we're in, the Traveler, a businessman, he will no longer have to travel abroad. Okay, so there will be a less passenger. It will really affect adversely the operation of airline industry. So if your company is an airline industry, so what kind of strategy you are going to use? Okay, that's why you will notice that uh, they are using third parties. Like Sky Skyscanner, in uh, Trip.com, and then a lot of kayak, a lot of uh, travel agencies. They are coordinating with that so that it will help them to to sell the airline seats. Okay? And also one of the strategy that airline is doing is that whole year round they are giving like a seat sale. Initially, it happened during uh, January. Okay, January. So they already set the the seat sale throughout the year. Okay, so that would be one of the strategy to anticipate and encourage more traveler. Okay, that could be a one of the specific way on how you could anticipate the substitute products and services. Okay, so let's move on to the last thread, the intensity of rivalry among competitors in an industry. Rivalry tactics include price competition, and you could see a lot of volume sales, 50% of one uh, by one take one. Advertising bottles, they create a very informative uh, commercials new product features and the increased customer service or warranties or the involved customer in decision making so what are the factors that leads to the intense rivalry 
And you can see there, there are numerous or equally balanced competitors. There are a lot of producers, there are a lot of sellers. And another thing is that uh, there's a slow industry growth. Okay? And another factor is there is a high fixed or shortage cost. And there is a lack of differentiation. Everybody is selling the same uh, the same product, okay? Or uh, one customer moves to another cost. Uh, one customer moves to another supplier to another supplier, okay? And another factor is there is a capacity augmented in large increments, okay? And there is a high exit barriers. For the capacity augmented, it means that when one competitor will enter into a competition, okay, um, they should have a big okay, scale, okay, or they should have a, a, a big capacity or they could provide a large amount of product, better product, okay, to, to sell in the market. So for example, in a new chemical, in the chemical industry, okay, any new chemical plant has to be large, okay, or very large, okay, in order to be competitive on prices. That's why one of the strategies that the company is doing is that they are providing an introductory price. If it's in the introductory price, it's kind of a low. They are um, selling goods and services in a low price to attract more markets. So by knowing this different uh, kind of threats, okay, the company could be able to strategize what are we going to do to anticipate the bargaining power of buyer? What are we going to do to anticipate the bargaining power of supplier and what kind of tactics okay, we have to, to implement okay, to win over the threats of substitute products and services and more so okay, specifically how are we going to cope up with the intensity of rivalry among competitors in an, in an industry that is where the strategic management take place. The changes caused by the internet economy have made strategizing more challenging. So it's not just only the competitive forces but also the innovation or the development of internet and digital technologies makes the uh, the business operation more challenging. The strategic analysis, informed formulation, and successful implementation may be even more difficult because nowadays it's just only one click okay, of the information are available online. Okay? And this internet era okay, really predicts the uncertainty of surroundings okay, because of the new technology. For this part, okay, you could see in your screen, okay, we're going to talk about how internet okay, affects okay, how digital technologies okay, could contribute impact in terms of Porter's five forces model competition. So these internet and digital technologies may complement or might be a, an additional barrier for the firm if they were not able to anticipate the effect of these technologies. For example, for the threat of new entrants, okay, no bits and benefits okay, for the competition but more on the disadvantage of the industry to lower barriers. Okay, um, and also, many internet-based capabilities can be easily imitated. Okay? So that could be a threat okay, or disadvantage for the new entrants. Okay? 
and another one is the effect of internet with the bargaining power of buyers okay it could reduce the power of buyer intermediaries in many distribution channels because nowadays there are a lot of online selling okay, online seller as well okay and the disadvantage is it could switch uh well from one supplier to another okay if you're going to compare the price of Kupang to g market it's uh somehow there's a little difference okay so it would really um affect the bargaining uh, power of the consumer and also the bargaining power of suppliers okay the benefits is that online procurement methods can increase bargaining power over supplier okay if there will be a lot of uh, online shopper okay um, there will be a lot of available supplier okay, on online okay but it's, but the disadvantage is that uh, publicly the customer could be able to see the information in terms also of price okay from one supplier to another supplier okay and it could deter the competition uh, it could when we say deter it could discourage competition because all of the informations are given publicly through internet every differentiated features are will, will be known will, will be known to the uh, customers okay. in terms of threats of substitute okay the benefits for the industry is that internet based could increase an overall efficiency and it could expand the industry sale but for the disadvantage of internet to the to the substitute it could create more opportunities for substitution okay, you, because customer will be given a lot of uh, options and alternatives but also including with the uh, variety of prices uh, the internet could provide disadvantages more in the aspect of rivalry okay, since location is less important Okay, there will be a lot of competitors okay? and also there will be a differentiation among competitors and it will be harder to, to perceive online okay? because sometimes the product online is kind of different from the actual product and because of the internet it will intensify the rivalry more because um, the consumer or the customer will focus on the price and the different features of the of the products will be minimized because you're going to you will be you could be able to find available uh, options online so as a manager you should know how to position your goods and services in the market anticipating the use of internet okay, you could also use the advantage of uh, internet and digital technologies okay, to uh, outperform to cope up with the new entrants with the uh, bargaining power of buyer and supplier okay and you can use internet okay to uh, complement or win over the substitute of products okay? or you could go with the flow of operating them with the with the, the same quality or better quality of product and um, internet may help your firm to um, not to escape the the rivalry but to stand out okay with the in the competition uh, for this part of discussion, we're going to address some of the limitations of Porter's five process model. Okay, number one, managers must not always avoid low profit industry. Okay, so this can still yield a high returns for players who pursued 
uh, sound strategies, not simple but you know uh, well planned strategies. Secondly, uh, business is not always a zero sum game. So when you say zero sum game, um, winners take it all. Okay, one uh, one entity will gonna win. Okay, by by itself, but um, in competition. Okay, it is it could be a mutually beneficial for both competitors. Okay, they could be in a win-win situation, so they could complement one another. Okay, even though they are uh, competitors. Okay, and the third one is that five forces analysis is essentially a, a static analysis. Okay, remember that um. The structure of the competition, the structure of external forces can still change from one uh, structure to another structure. It, it can change. That is why as a manager of a firm, we have to understand and know the concept of complements. Okay? Complements typically are products or services that are uh, that have a potential impact on the value of the firm's own product and services. Okay? You are going to use external factors okay, to complement okay, what is lacking in your company and you could, you could use that as your strength okay, and an opportunity to improve your organization's operations to cope up with competition. In your book, it provided several examples of complements, okay, software and microprocessors in the personal computer industry and the video game industry. Okay. Michael Porter, okay, the model, okay, would not add complements to the five forces because they don't have a direct linear relationship to industry okay, in terms of profitability. However, the model clearly okay, uh, explain okay, and show the impact okay, to the industry profitability. Again, I would like to reiterate that even though the, the model of microporters has a limitation, we can use the word complement, okay, complement uh, to cope up with the situation what is lacking okay you find ways on how to fill in um those lacking indicators and then you use the resources okay to complement okay, this weakness these threats and you use opportunities okay to complement these uh threats and weaknesses To understand further how complement works, you could see in Exhibit 2.6 the value net. The value is a game theory and all represents the players in the game, analyzing how their interaction creates a value to the firm. You could see the vertical dimension of the net, it includes customer and suppliers. Okay? So the firm has a direct interaction okay, with the customers and the suppliers. And the uh, so it means that uh, the company okay, could control their strategies okay, based on what's have what's the uh, customers uh, profile and the, the suppliers behavior. Okay, so they can position their uh, their uh, resources for the horizontal dimensions okay so it uh, it includes substitutes and complements they interact but not necessarily a okay, transact okay? yet complements and give impact to the value of goods and services so they could work on with like partnership Okay, so partnership increased efficiency and performance of the products. That's why you can see that uh, the forward integration could be a good uh, 
a strategy wherein you could possibly have a control over the the, the supplier so that could be a, a way of complementing okay, of what the organization uh, capacity it means that even though the company has no they uh, has no control over the co uh, the customer and the supplier and the substitutions can affect the operation of the company okay but there are still uh, a strategy where it, it could complement okay what is missing with the company to uh to provide quality service to the customer to uh to have a good relationship with the, with the supplier and then and to anticipate the, in case that there will be some substitution that will happen in the market. And that is what value net is, okay? a strategy wherein you know how to position okay, your, your company resources complementing the profile of customer complementing to the, to the what, what suppliers can give and you could uh, substitute. Uh, you could anticipate the threats of substitution. More so, Porter mentioned that it is important to understand the root cost of profitability by choosing time frame and quantification of five sources. It means that your strategy. Okay, should only be covered a particular period of time, let's say three to five years, okay, or ten years. That's why some of the company they're doing like uh, vision 2020, vision 2030, vision 2050, okay, because you know that the trends in the market uh, would not be the same after five years or ten years, okay, that's why. It should have a time frame as well as the quantitative factor. Okay? I heard from a professor about um, in 10 years, okay, the staple food of uh, rice, of, of Koreans normally is rice, right? So you eat your staple food is rice. But in 2019, in the economic index in terms of uh, Korean consumption, the number one okay, product okay, were in Korean consume is not ramyeon. Guess what? Based on your culture, it's bread. Okay. In 2019, the number one uh, product that Koreans okay, had chosen to eat is bread. Okay, that is the number one. Uh, Normally, those people who eat bread are those people who are in Western. So you could see that there is a shift or there is a change of uh, consumers' choice of consumption. Okay, so, so it's very important that you identify the recent quantitative factors, okay, and also the qualitative factors okay, in the market or the pattern of uh, competition flow. Strategies are being created by every firm. Okay? In, in, individually, they create a particular strategy according to their capabilities and according to the result of their assessment. But there are some strategies that are being done by group. Okay? And we call it strategic groups within industries. Okay? So these strategies are okay, uh, came from a cluster of firms that share similar strategies. Remember, there are no firms that are totally different. No firms are exactly the same. So let me go into this again. Complement. Okay? This group of firms or cluster of firms join together okay, to complement to cooperate and to use strategies okay, applicable to their needs, applicable to the profile of their company. Some of the particular aspects of strategies related with the 
to the breed of product and geographic scope, the price or quality, they share the same strategy in terms of degree of vertical integration. It's between the buyers and the suppliers. And then also they share the same strategy in terms of types of distribution. And this strategic group can be considered as analytical tool because it could help identify buyer barriers to mobilize okay, the, the production flow or the competition flow. It could also help identify groups okay, whose competitive position may be marginal or tenuous. It means that they could be able to identify which company or which firm in the group is weak okay, or or in the edge okay or the edge of competition okay, or performing law. This uh, tool could be able to monitor okay, the direction of the firm's strategy and could be able to help to think through the implications of each industry trend. For the strategic group as a whole, okay, more on complementing uh, one another. Strength of one is the strength of others. The weakness of one uh, can be resolved by the strength of others. The opportunity could be the opportunity for everybody, and then the threats they could be able to find solution and how uh, this uh, threat can be anticipated. And professor, how about the competition? Okay, as I told you that the in in the industry it's not just the the principle of zero exam okay, or the winner takes the dog, but it could also be beneficial for every industry one way to another, and mostly uh the firms the group of firms can be in the position of win-win situation lastly let us try to give an example of strategic groups within industries okay. so these are five strategic groups okay. first one high end okay, so you can see here the left top corner the first group is consists of Ferrari, Lamborghini, and Porsche. Okay, so this is the luxury automakers. They have very exclusive clientele and face little rivalry. Okay, and second we have the the lower left. Okay, uh, this group has a low price or quality attribute, and you could see they sell. Um, a, uh, an automotive in a low price and of course you could expect the quality of your product and the third group is also in the position of the in the that provide low price and low breed of product line okay, that is Hyundai and Kia okay. next the, the fourth group we have the Middle with the Mercedes and the BMW. Okay, they have a high okay, price, high price, and also with the quality is also average in terms of breed of product line. And the last one we have the final group at the right far corner. It consists of firms with a broad range of products and multiple uh, price points. You have Toyota, Ford, General Motors, Chrysler, Honda, and Nissan. Okay, so they sell high-end uh, cars and they could also send a uh, low-price car. Okay, and they have uh, multiple range of products so they have the capacity to compete in lower end and higher end of the market so to summarize the the chapter two we discovered that 
when we analyze, when we monitor, when we scan, and if we gather information for in competitive intelligence, we could use that for forecasting. We could be able to create competitive advantage. Particularly, we have to monitor, in, uh, scan, and gather information in the general environment and the competitive environment. So for our general environment, we have to evaluate the demographic profile, social cultural segment, political or legal, technological segment, economic segment, and the global segment. And we identify the relationship among them. Of course, if the aging population change, there will be also a change in product. If there's a change in consumer behavior, if they don't have much money to pay for the product or they are being promoted or work in other country, definitely it would change their uh, standard of living. Okay? And also, we analyze the competitive environment using the Porter's Five Courses model of industry competition. As a manager, it is very important to consider the new entrance, uh, the bargaining power of buyer and supplier, and also we have to complement the use of internet and digital technologies to pay more, okay, to create a competitive advantage to your company. And a particular strategy that has been mentioned like uh, backward integration and uh, forward integration. Another strategy being mentioned to, uh, to complement okay, the competitive environment is what we call the strategic group. Okay? So remember, in the competition, it's not always that winners take it all. Sometimes, um, you have to complement also other competitors. That's why uh, it is suggested that even though you compete, uh, firm has its own goal of outperforming other competitors. It's always a good business if everybody will be in a win-win situation. Okay? So I hope that you clearly understand the importance of analyzing the external environment. Okay, in detail, okay, the general and the competitive environment because it really affects and influences the decision making of the organization. That's all. Thank you very much.